Hello and welcome to Western Perspective. I'm Nelson Liu. Well, enthusiasts for the coloured little building block Lego are in for a treat, with Perth's first Lego store opening in Caronup. The store opened its doors for the first time on Thursday morning, renewing the passion among Perth fans. Steve Anderson gets building in this report. New and old fans alike of the Danish toy building blocks, known as Lego, are lining up around the block to get into a Lego-only store. The first Lego store in Western Australia opened at Karanup Shopping Centre to great success, with adults and kids queuing up to get in. It has been non-stop. Um, the line has been very, very long all day. Even the line inside the store to get to the uh, registers has been crazy. So lots of fans here ready to get their uh, first big purchases of sets that they haven't seen elsewhere. The store gives Lego fans exclusive access to hard-to-find sets not available at other retailers, as well as containing a builder mini station and a pick-a-brick wall. From mini creative displays to large-sized figurines, block by block, part by part, created as a feast for the eyes. Different reasons why you should come to the store. We've got our Brickman built Lego models. So that's a 75,000 piece Lego model of a local with quokkas um, over there. That's a great photo opportunity for guests. Um, there's also the mosaic of Perth City. Um, so there's lots of photo opportunities, lots of unique experiences they can have from building their own minifigure to stacking their own cups. It seems that any little and not so little Lego fans in Perth have a must stop destination to explore into the future, giving LEGO fans the ability to create whatever they want with endless possibilities. And now, here's AMAWA spokesperson Dr Andrew Miller with this week's COVID-19 update and commentary. Hi, thanks for your time. Just want to recap one really fundamental problem that we've had since the start of this pandemic, which has been the nature of airborne spread. So this virus doesn't spread through droplets. It's not safe to be 1.5 metres away from anyone who's breathing out uh, COVID virus. And we've just seen the Sydney gym where 15 people managed to get it by exercising in the same place. Why is that? Well, because you're in a confined space. When you exercise, you breathe out about 10 times more air than you normally would. You do it quite forcefully. It goes at high volume. You can imagine it mixes into the space. And so naturally enough, with an airborne virus, it's more likely to catch it. And then you see a puzzled gym owner standing out the front saying, but I cleaned everything like they told me to. Well, his problem is that they're still running on guidelines in some places that pretend that this is a droplet spread disease and ignore the fact that it's airborne. That was the problem, if you'll recall, that we had uh, with the hotel quarantine spreading from room to room. And it was the problem all the healthcare workers in Victoria had last year when 800 of them got infected. Uh, because they weren't wearing the right mask to prevent a virus that spreads like cigarette smoke. So this is the problem we're now seeing in schools over east where they've sent them all packing back to uh, school and of course parents are greatly relieved because it's a very hard thing to do lockdown with kids but if you're going to do that what's the problem? Well airborne spreads your problem and if you don't have well ventilated classrooms that change the air over frequently and you don't have masks on or you could have a HEPA filter in there also, which are very good at removing the virus from the air. If you don't have any of those things, just put them in a stuffy classroom. What's gonna happen? Well, it's gonna spread from child to child very rapidly. And although we know that most children don't die of COVID, only about one in 10,000 who test positive will die, um, around about 1% of them do end up in hospital. And some of those get very sick indeed and end up in intensive care. And then there's a proportion uh, and yeah, there's an argument about how much that is, but it's still a significant proportion, whether it's uh, two or five or 10% of them are still having symptoms three months later, which are interfering with their schooling, with playing sport and so on. And we don't know how long those symptoms are gonna go on for. Does that make sense? Well, yes, it does, because this is a virus that causes inflammation in the brain and the liver and the heart and the lungs and the kidneys and the reproductive system. We know that it's a very nasty beast. One way we can tell is the fact that it kills a lot of older people uh, who don't have quite the same immune system as the young kids do to fight it off. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to prevent airborne spread as well as vaccinate. We can't do one or the other, we have to do both. And that's Western Australia's future, is gonna be making sure that we prevent airborne spread even after vaccination, so that those who are vulnerable, like all the kids under 12, hopefully we'll get a vaccine for them soon, like they're getting in California this week, uh, and across the rest of the US, but we have to uh, protect those young kids as well as all the people on chemo or have had organ transplants as well as little babies. 
So remember, it's airborne spread, you've got to get vaccinated and you're going to need your booster dose very soon if you're six months past your last dose of vaccine. Thanks for your time. That was Dr Andrew Miller. And that's all for WP this week. We'll be back again next time, but for now, it's back to you, Ivan and Sarah. Thanks, Nelson. And here's Leo with what's coming up on 6 News tonight. Thanks, guys. Tonight on 6 News, breaking news. Students get ready to return to the classroom full-time in Melbourne amid large crowds at retail stores right across Victoria. Plus, ICAC set to resume after phone calls made between ex-New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian and disgraced former MP Darren Maguire will play. We'll recap the key developments and let you know what to expect tomorrow morning. And the clean-up continues after reports of ongoing power issues after heavy rain, thunder, lightning and especially wind hit Victoria and South Australia tonight. We've got new footage of the damage and a look at the conditions expected nationwide. You can see full details on those stories and plenty more by going to our YouTube channel. Just search 6 News Australia to find us or our new look website, 6newsau.com. For now, though, guys, it's back to you. Thanks, Leo. And that's our weekly news and current affairs. We have the latest on our website, wamnews.com.au. From Sarah and myself, wish you good health. Good night. See you next Sunday. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>